Take a deep breath and imagine the oceans. Beneath the waves is a vast blue world full of life and wondrous beauty. Planet Earth is planet ocean. The sea covers more than 70% of its surface. From frozen polar seas to warm tropical waters, oceans encompass the globe. And from the infinite blue deserts of the open ocean to the unexplored worlds of the deep sea, the oceans live and breathe as one. Oceans regulate the climate, rainfall, winds and temperature. They provide half the oxygen the planet needs to survive. Every second breath we take comes from the oceans. Life on Earth started here four billion years ago. Now the sea is home to a dazzling variety of life, more diverse than anywhere else. For many millions of us, the sea is a source of food and income. But for most, the oceans start at the shoreline and end at the horizon. It's time to look at the bigger picture. Take a deep breath and imagine the oceans. The oceans give life to our planet and to us, but in return we treat them far less kindly. From top to bottom our oceans are in crisis. By jeopardizing their future, we have placed our own in the balance. Of all human impacts on the oceans, fishing is probably the most harmful. And it is here that our relationship with the sea has changed most dramatically. The oceans once seemed a limitless resource, too bountiful to deplete too vast to be affected by man. The sea was our provider, but proved at times also a formidable opponent. As we braved the world's oceans, we gained access to all their resources. But we have now come to the end of an unsustainable harvest. It is especially the way we catch our fish that is causing the problem. Expanding populations mean an increase in the world's appetite for fish. The only way to keep up is through technology. We now find our fish with spotter planes, helicopters, sonar and satellite images. With such tools at our disposal, no school of fish is beyond our reach. One billion people, many in poverty, rely on fish as their primary source of protein. But as we are rapidly emptying our oceans, the global catch is not shared fairly. Now that stocks in their own coastal seas have become depleted, industrial fishing fleets are operating off distant shores. One European vessel fishing off West Africa can take as much in one month as 7,000 local fishermen catch in a year. To make matters worse, illegal or pirate fishing has become a real and global problem. In some areas, every other fish landed on the fish market is stolen. the livelihoods and food security of millions are at stake. But so is the fate of thousands of species. Over the past few decades, many of the larger fish have been brought to the brink of extinction. 
sharks fulfill a crucial role in the ocean's ecosystem as top predators. Yet every year, 100 million of these animals are caught. Many are stripped of their fins and thrown back into the sea to drown. The fins end up here, on markets across Asia. To float around in soup. But it's not just sharks that are in trouble. Even once common species, such as cod, are so critically overfished that they may disappear from the oceans forever. In order to catch the last remaining fish, we use ever more powerful and indiscriminate technology. We catch tons of undersized and unwanted fish together with other marine life. And on bycatch, one fishery has a particularly bad track record. For every kilo of shrimp, five kilos of marine life are wasted. With the bycatch, the future of both ecosystem and fishermen go overboard. But bycatch is not limited to trawl fisheries. Thousands of miles of long lines, abandoned fishing gear and illegal drift nets entangle seabirds, turtles, dolphins and whales. The serial depletion of stocks has forced us to find new fishing grounds. In the deep ocean, we find ourselves among aliens from another world. In these cold and dark waters, coral reefs grow on submarine mountains called seamounts. These fragile structures have taken thousands of years to form. They support unique and wonderful life forms. So far, we have explored less than 2% of this last frontier. The deep ocean still harbors many secrets. Among them may be solutions to diseases such as cancer. But fishermen are beating scientists in the race to the deep. Bottom trawlers bulldoze the deep sea reefs, reducing ancient habitats to rubble. Corals, the thousand-year-old homes of a myriad of life forms, are dumped as waste. Fish are among the last wild animals to be hunted commercially. But now a new solution has come into focus. Across the globe, huge cages and farms are set on the water, rearing fish where once they swam wild. At present, one out of four fish we eat is farmed, and in the future, that figure could double. But rather than provide a solution to overfishing, fish farming is making the problem worse. For every kilo of farmed fish, we need to take four kilos of fish from the wild to feed the caged. But again, it's our appetite for shrimp that causes the most severe damage. Mangroves are marine forests that fringe the coastlines of the tropics. They offer protection from storms and provide a unique habitat and breeding ground for a great number of species. But in many parts of the world, hundreds of miles of mangroves have been cleared to make way for shrimp farms. They can operate for only a few years until eventually they choke on their own pollution and leave behind a wasteland. The oceans are more to us than just a food source, but our other activities are often just as harmful. Sand and gravel dredgers vacuum the seabed. The ocean floor is mined for minerals and deeper below we drill for oil. We transport it across the oceans, dangerously close to our coasts. 
all too often with disastrous consequences. Toxic and radioactive wastes have all been flowing into the sea for decades. The pollution has built up in the ocean's food web and ultimately flows back to us in the food we eat. Lifeless dead zones, deprived of oxygen, have developed in locations around the world. But another, perhaps far greater threat is looming. Climate change attacks the heart and lungs of the oceans. It affects life from top to bottom. As the oceans warm up, changes start to occur in their chemistry, affecting the smallest of marine life forms. Microscopic algae are the basis of all life in the sea. Climate change will alter both the availability of plankton and the species it consists of. As a result, the ocean's food web will become unbalanced. Deep down in the ocean, powerful currents flow like giant conveyor belts. They control our climate as well as the transport of nutrients through the oceans. If these currents come to a stop, whole ecosystems and the fisheries that depend on them could collapse. For the most delicate life, even a small rise in temperature could spell disaster. These white coral polyps look beautiful, but in reality, they are dying. Without the algae that live inside of them, providing them with color and energy, corals cannot survive. As large reef areas bleach, a habitat that provides the home for thousands of species simply fades away. It has only been in the past few decades that we've been able to see for ourselves what is really going on beneath the waves. As the oceans are revealing their secrets and beauty, we are also becoming more aware that they're in real danger. But fortunately, the oceans are resilient, and it is not too late for change. We need to shift to more sustainable fishing and away from over-exploitation and destruction. And if we are to protect the oceans from pollution and climate change, we will have to reform our lives on land. Perhaps we can draw on our experience at home to protect the oceans. The creation of nature reserves is a well-established concept on land, but not so in the marine environment. By setting aside large areas of the oceans in which all harmful human activities are banned, the sea will be given a chance to recover. As ecosystems are restored, fish stocks will rebound far beyond the limits of the protected areas. To ensure true protection, a global network of marine reserves is needed. They should protect large areas of diverse habitat, both along coasts and in the open sea. Creating such a network will require political will and money about $12 billion a year. That's about the same amount spent yearly in Europe and the US on perfume alone. Time to ask ourselves which we value more. The smell of perfume or that of the fresh ocean breeze. The people of the Pacific are surrounded by the endless sea. To the islanders, the ocean is not what divides us, but what brings us together. It is not too late to make a change. We all can play a role in the protection of our oceans. And in the words of a Japanese poet, 
Individually, we are a drop, but together, we are an ocean.